yeah, so let's get started. You guys have any question? So last time I think we talked about, I'm gonna remove all of these things. So that is, last time I think I gave a lot of examples using English. So I'm, I was thinking about it. I think one of the things that might frustrate you guys if I'm keep on using those Arabic text, you might feel uh, way, way overwhelmed. For example, uh, I mean, th this Arabic text is, is, you know, something, this is something we have to deal with because that's the actual text of the Ajurumiya. But sometimes when we go to the Sharh, you know, you might feel overwhelmed. But remember what I'm saying about this Sharh. We're not going to be reading them, all of them, obviously not, we can't even if we wanted to. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, I was thinking that we will be explaining things in English, right? Uh, the, the idea is right now to get the whole grammar concept using English language, right? So I'll be translating things, I'll be explaining everything in, in English. So even if I'm reading something, these readings, these readings are not easy. I mean, if you can read these things, subhanAllah, you're not sitting here in the class. You'll be in my side of the, you know, story you'll be teaching it because it's not for you guys to read and understand even sometimes you will see when a simple book when they write an instruction those people can't even read those instructions because th that's not meant for the students and right? it's meant for the teacher so <clears throat> remember these books are meant for uh, the arabs who already knows how to speak and read and write and everything but they have problems they need help with the grammar okay so idea of using these books the explanation books are uh, are to use as a reference. Okay, I'll be reading them. I've read them, and I'll explain from whatever these uh, uh, these books are explaining. Okay, so but my, our focus would be here. Even when when we're reading this, not everything. I mean, obviously, you have to try your best to memorize as many vocabs as you can, but not everything for you to understand right now in terms of words, right? Even the uh, the sentence structures. So this is something that uh, I am trying to uh, make it clear. So uh, I'll be explaining things in English. Uh, so idea is to understand the grammar. And while you're doing this, guys, you have to do your best. You have to do your best to build your vocabularies. I mean, this is so, so important. Uh, in meanwhile, just talking about books. Um, this is, remember, I, I mentioned that two books that I like personally about uh, the explanation of Ajurumiya. One of them, this one, right? Tuhfatu uh, Saniya by Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid. And this is another book, uh, it's called Mumti' Fi Shahir Ajurumiya. So this book, I like this book also, actually, we should be focusing on this book a little bit more because this book is much, much easier and shorter than the uh, uh, other one. And I will just go a little bit on this. So I'm gonna give you this book also. Uh, just keep them, you know, handy. And uh, if you, you can try, because this book's a little bit easier. Uh, as you can see, the text that he explained, the first line, here he kind of summarized everything in one page. And you know, these are just footnotes. And then he also gives some interesting type of ex exercise once in a while, we might be, uh, uh, you know, looking at this exercise to make sure that we understand the concept. Uh, but uh, mostly, probably, if we have to read some explanation, unless there's something uh, very important that we have to go back to uh, the other shot, uh, then uh, unless uh, most of the time we probably will be coming here and, and taking a peek at it. And remember, these are not for you you know, so don't get too overwhelmed by this text, okay? Inshallah, the time is coming. You will be reading these things and understanding everything before you know it. So, Jayit, so let us uh, let us start. So the last time uh, we started talking about this line, right? This line I told you is one of interesting, uh, important line. Uh, and I actually like this definition. Uh, it defines what the kalam is, the speech. So basically there are four elements, right? We said it has to be loved, okay? Uh, just a quick 
just quick, 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 I'm gonna show you from this book. We're not gonna spend too much time on this line. We have done it, but I just wanted to show you how this book is. Uh, I explained this thing, I liked it. So, uh, so for example, uh, it talks about, uh, this is, remember, Qalal Musannif, remember this word, Musannif, Rahimullah. Then, you know, this is the line of the Ajurumiya. And then uh, he starts his sharh, but he, he nicely, he separated all these uh, four, uh, four elements that uh, the Ajurumiya mentioned, right? Number one, Ahaduhu, Ahaduha. The first of them is, An yakuna lavzan, that he should be loved. Then he explained, Ai, you will also say Ai. I think you've seen the word Ai uh, with the Shadda Ai, like, you know, which. But here, I means meaning. You know, when you say, uh, for example, if you say uh, love, I means love, meaning. Sautan, Saut is a sound. This word, I, uh, you might, uh, if I'm writing a translation, uh, you should uh, know them. Okay. So it's, it's a show, uh, Sautan is a sound, Mushtamilan. Mushtamil is to uh, include it. Okay, something included. Ala ba'dil huruf al hijaiya. Okay, some of the letters of what letters of hijaiya. Hijaiya is the you know Arabic peninsula, right? When you say huruf al hijai, it's basically it's talking about Arabic alphabet. Basically talking about. So you see, he's he's defining another interesting way. He's saying that love means sound that includes Arabic letter. Okay. Then he says murakab. Then he explains murakab. What is you know kalimatain or akthar, uh, two or more, and then mufid. You know here remember the definition that I said. Yahsunu sukut al mutakallim alayhi. So yahsunu is mean it's good, it's okay. So it is okay, it is fine to make a stop. Sukut is to stop. That's why you will say people say uskut means stop. You know, be quiet, something like that. So it is okay to be quiet of mutakallim. This word, I think we have seen this before. Mutakallim. Remember when we talked about the pronouns, you have the subject pronoun mutakallim. So it is the first person who, who the one who is speaking. It is okay for him to stop. Alayhi. Alayhi means uh, this uh, uh, this uh, word loved or or, or kalam. Meaning, uh, I think here he is referring to kalam. So it's basically saying that it is okay, it is fine, it is good for the speaker to stop on it, which means right, you're not waiting for him to continue. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, so here, okay. So he says, uh, uh, okay, so he said to put a, you know, the, the tick uh, check, uh, something there is amam al kalam al nahwi. Remember, we define what is kalam al nahwi uh, because speech in linguistic means something else. Linguistic it can mean uh, you know anything. Uh, you make some kind of noise. You you do some kind of ishara like you're pointing at something. That's speech in according to linguistic. But he's saying nahwi. This this word excuse me. This word you have to know. So it says. Uh, so you have to know. Uh, so he wants us to find out whether or not. <coughs> These things are uh, speech according to the grammar, according to the grammarian, right? So what is this word? There's no haraka, but it should look very familiar to you, right? Kitab, al-kitabu. So is it a speech? Huh? Al-kitab means the book. Is it a speech? So here he's saying, uh, no, it's not a speech. And then he gives a reason why it's not a speech. لِأَنَّهُ غَيْرْ murakkab, Because this is not murakkab. Now, here it says, okay, so you want uh, murakkab? Okay, so it looks like he's giving us murakkab. It says either, either means if or when, and it's a, it's a conditional statement. Either bada'a, bada'a is a good word to memorize as a verb, uh, uh, to begin. Uh, you know, to begin means here it's a past tense, so... Uh, Begin. Addars. What is addars? This is also you need to know. So the things that I'm writing, guys, you have to know. Lesson. Okay. So now if we translate, it would be when or if the lesson began, began in the past tense. Now he wants to know if it is a speech. What do you think? The last one, last one wasn't a speech because it was only one word, but now we have 
definitely more than a word. So the transla translation is when the lesson began. So is it sentence? Is it a, uh, meaning is it kalam? Hmm? Yes. It, okay, so if somebody says when the lesson began, it's definitely not complete. Because when you have a conditional statement, you must have the uh, what comes after the conditional. So when the lesson began, you are, if I just think about it, I'm just telling you, you know, when the lesson began, you know, I see I give that pause because your brain definitely wants to know what happened. It's not about the story anymore. It's just like you are not, you know, you cannot stop here. You know, you cannot stop here. You have to complete. Okay. So this would not be a, a sentence. And tell me why it's not a sentence. Uh, I mean, I'm saying sentence. You know, you can interchange interchange uh, between uh, kalam and jumla. Uh, but uh, why is not kalam? Because it is which word? Remember, there's a four words. The words would be what mufid is ghair mufid. Uh, this right this word guys um, memorize this word right means no not un okay right a mufid mufid so because it's not beneficial i mean you have to say something what happened uh, when the lesson start but what about the next one it says mustashar okay mustashar is the consular consular like advisor advisor think of advisor advisor muat mean is same thing as like uh, i mean it's a different form it's not that popular but i mean uh, aminun is like what what is aminun trust or the okay so now, what do you think? The advisor is trustworthy. What do you think about this one? Huh? Yes, why? Remember, uh, this is definitely a sentence because this is our nominative sentence, the muptada and khabar. Muptada is definite and the khabar is indefinite. Inshallah, we'll go over those things. But again, remember what I said, this, uh, you have to have some kind of Arabic knowledge before, you know, even uh, before, you know, so I'm pretty sure a lot of most of you have understanding about the nominative sentence. So this is your pure nominative sentence. Okay. So this is definitely your, uh, your kalam. Okay. Now here, he gives you this information. I don't think we have time to go through them. Uh, it's just basically he wants, um, so he wants you, he wants you to uh, make a sentence, uh, a, an, you know, a speech using two words. You know, for example, just one, just, I'll just do one. Zaidun, Zaid is a name, person. So you can say, Ja'a. What is Ja'a? The reason why I'm using this one, Ja'a, you will see this kind of example a lot in, <clears throat> a lot in this word is, you know, uh, it's a very important word, comes in the Quran all the, all the time. Yes, he came. So Ja'a Zaidun, that means Zaid came. This word comes in Quran way often, so please uh, uh, please memorize this word. And the grammarian tend to use this word a lot. Okay, now. So now let's see what else we have <clears throat> in this, uh, what, what else we have. Okay, so finally, Alhamdulillah, I think we are very comfortable with this idea, so that's fine. al kalamu huwa al murakkab al-mufid bil wadah. Okay, so we understand what speech is. Great. So what is next? Now next it says, al aqsamuhu thalathatun. So this word is also, has a plural of qism. Qismun. Uh, Qismun is, is like, a, is a, a Kismun is also like part, uh, it can also mean kind, mostly like part. 
you know, uh, you understand? So even in uh, when you go to the grocery section, you have they have the kismun for for the vegetables, vegetables, kismun for the fruits and everything. So you know the sections part. So here I think not kind. I think I'll put section. Can also be section. Okay, and his plural is aksam. Yes, category. Yes, yeah, uh, the category is a good word also. Yes, category definitely can be uh, a category. Yes, so all of the category type parts. Yes, so based on the context, right? So however you want to, uh, uh, they all kind of mean the same thing. Same thing anyway, right? So qism and is plural is aqsam. So now we say it's saying aqsamuhu, the who is referring to the kalam, aqsamuhu thalathatun. What is thalatha? So this is thalatha is three. So now it's saying that it has three parts. Okay, if you translate word for word, its parts are three. So it has three parts. So now he's talking about parts of speech in Arabic language, right? So the first one he says, ismun. This is the first one, ismun. And then fi'lun, okay? And wa harfun ja'a li ma'anan. Okay? Okay? So what is ism? Ism is basically, uh, I, will, I will divide here. So ism is basically a word. Yes, ism is, uh, it's, um, so here's another interesting thing. Most of the time when you study Islamic science or any science, honestly, to be honest with you, in Arabic language, especially in the, when they talk about any word and you're using that word in any particular science, they will define that word. First, they will define it in the linguistic way. And then they will define it. What does it mean in the technical way? What is the term, the word, that word, what is the terminological meaning in that context? Okay, so this concept, you will find it over and over and over is coming. So linguistically, the name, the ism means what? Name. That's what linguistic meaning is. So for example, if I say, ismi Ahmed, my name is Ahmed. Ismuka Muhammad, your name is Muhammad. So that is the same word, ism. Then we say, is Bismillah, right? We say Bismillah, right? Bismillah. So that means what? With the name of Allah. See, so that this ism, it means name in the linguistic way. But what does it mean in, in, in the technical way here? So here, the technical way, it means a word that is understood by itself and doesn't have, and it's not connected with a time. Okay, so any word that is understood by itself, it has some kind of meaning, you understand it can, you know, it, it's self-sufficient word. It can stand by itself, I, you know, if that any makes sense. So a word that understood by itself, but main key point is that it doesn't have any time attached to it. Okay, that is what ism means. Now, now you will see why the pronoun is part of the ism. Because pronoun, you say he, hua. This is definitely a word. You understand what he means, hua means. And you know that, you know, you can, this word is independent and it doesn't have any time attached to it. If you say daily, hmm, now hua was pronoun, right? Yes, every brand is hua is pronoun, but it falls under the same definition of ism. It's a word, stands by itself, doesn't have any time. Check. Daily, what is daily? That's, that's not a pronoun. That is like, uh, what is an adverb, right? So it's an adverb, but does it fall under our definition? It sounds like it has a time because we're talking about day. But this word, when you say daily, you have, you know, it's something that continues, meaning it doesn't have any time or that this was done. You're not talking about that you did it, something on the past, present, or the future. You say 
you understand so this is tricky but good example tricky but at the same time you know this word doesn't have a tense it's a good point uh, it's really it doesn't have any tense so when you look at the daily you don't know if that word belonged yesterday or in the future or in the present it means daily you can say this you can use this word in the past tense i did study daily uh, last year i studied daily last year then you can say i will study daily in the future i will, i'm studying daily right now see the daily itself the word doesn't give you tense right but this is an adverb in uh, in our english language and in is in arabic also it's an adverb uh, uh, but the point is that it doesn't have any time attached to it when you look at the daily you don't know right so this is a tricky one but uh, it's a good example to get this idea uh, across so uh, and then and of course our our other names everything so any any word you can think of that doesn't have any specific tense like past present and the future then uh, then the word is ism what is the question is it now the umbrella term for ism uh, as uh, as is this me from the... no that's why that's why i'm using the word ism right now because um when we use a noun you can define the ism as a noun here yeah it is an um, umbrella term you can define but uh, when you uh, this is very easy to explain in the beginner class that ism is a noun but then we always get into this, this kind of problem because in english language the noun is a noun pronoun is a pronoun adverb is adverb see there are different things yes yeah, so we use this term the noun as an umbrella but when we study a little bit in advanced grammar they will define what ism is much more technical way so you will see that uh, why everything else falls under this why is an umbrella the reason why is umbrella this word noun is just we're using it the the word is ism right we don't have exact translation of this word the way that uh, arabs are using it right because when you say noun we get into trouble because we have a pronoun we have an adverb so noun in which sense right so that's why yes we can use these terms we will be using the ism as a noun as an umbrella but the proper definition is that it is a word that stands by itself it doesn't have any time attached to it yes okay yes that's that's the best way to think about and then it has another part which is the opposite fail which is a not, which is a word that stands by itself but it definitely has tense attached to it meaning it has time so uh, in in uh, in for example we have zahaba now the word zahaba is what the habis he went so now as soon as we say went or use any verb we understand that time right away just by looking at the word went we know that it's a past tense okay so remember when we say tense uh uh we have zaman we have three types of uh, zaman right we have past in arabic it's called al madhi then we have present in arabic it's called al hal remember we're not talking about the verb types we're talking about the time in terms of time right the hal is the word for present okay the the one that uh, inshallah I'll, i'll give you the other example and the future is al mustaqbal al mustaqbal almost uh most what am i getting almost talk but okay so we have past al madhi the present is al hal and future is al mustaqbal so these are the time we're not talking about the types of verb okay these are we're just talking about the tense think about the tense this is tense okay so there are three tenses of course the past present and the future so if the word has this any of these tenses then obviously it falls on, under the verb okay so for example we have zahaba so this is definitely in the madhi in the past tense okay 
And if we say yadhabu, yadhabu, this is in the present tense. Inshallah, we'll talk about a lot more about those things, uh, but I'm just giving you just a little bit concept about the fact. So now they're talking about any word that has a tense, any of these three tense, past, present, or the future, al-madi, al-hal, uh, or al-mustaqbal, then it is considered fail. Now the word fail, remember again, uh, every word, the technical word that uh, any science usage uses, it has uh, uh, two different meanings. The linguistic, what does the linguistic means? Fail. Anybody knows what does the fail means from the linguistic perspective? Now that is the technical definition. Fail, uh, yes, the technical definition is the verb. What is the linguistic definition of fail? Yes, action, do, yes, to do. Okay, yeah, action to do. And we use this word all the time. Allah uses this word all the time. Allah will not, Allah is not using the word fi'al. Fa'ala is in Quran all over the place as a verb. Of course, it's in, so fa'ala, you, you will find it as did. Okay, something that he did or some kind of action has been taken. Okay, and then, and then the third type is harf. Uh, see, that's why, you know, uh, sometimes we kind of have to use some of these uh, Arabic terms. It's much better because we always get into issue because harf, it also has a linguistic definition and the technical definition. What is the linguistic definition? Anybody heard the word harf in some other context? Harf, huruf, letter. Yes, the linguistic is letter. Any letter that you see, jim. Hamza, Lam, Mim, Ayn, Noon, all of these things are harf. Okay. So what is the technical definition? Here's the technical definition. Harfun ja'a lima'anan. Well, here it's not defining, actually just talking about the harf. Uh, inshallah, the other book, if we go, you will see. Yeah, so the, the best word, honestly, I found, uh, I was looking for a much better word, is the word particle. Uh, I, this is the best close to translating uh, that I found, but you know, it, this word in English, all of them has a little bit problem anyway, except for verb. I think the verb word uh, pretty much the same as how we use in English. So half is, here's what it says. Half is something that it does not stand by itself. The meaning is not clear by itself. Anything, if you say a uh, or an, you see, these are words. Nobody's, nobody's saying they're not word. If, it's, if they're not word, what are they? Even the letter, it sounds like one letter, but it's kind of word from a perspective, right? But it doesn't, it, these words cannot stand by themselves. There's nothing we can get out of this word, uh, A or N, or even say in, right? So in Arabic, if we say, if we say fi, we say ila, okay? Or even say al, all of these things, you know they're, they're not complete. You have We have to give something else. So these words cannot stand by themselves. So that's why it says, here it says, ja'a, I just give you the uh, uh, word. What does ja'a mean? I just mentioned a little while ago. Hmm? Ja'a, remember I said ja'a zaidun, he came, yes. So that means it comes for what? Li ma'ana. This word, uh, ma'ana, I think we mentioned uh, before. What is ma'ana? For the meaning. So it comes for a meaning. Here, what the author is trying to say, that the, we use this one with something else to make it uh, the meaning clear. Understand? So harf is something that, uh, remember the other, all of them, the ism and the fail, these words can stand by themselves. And they, uh, you know, the way they're distinguished, the ism, doesn't give you time and fail gives you time. The harf is something that it cannot, it's not sufficient by itself. It needs, what does it need? If we only have three parts of speech, harf cannot stand by itself. It needs what? It needs either ism or fail. So harf, you always need ism or fail to make it complete. So if you see in, Fee, I don't understand what fee, but if I say feel bayti, okay, now you kind of understand uh, what I'm talking about. 
See, remember, filbait is not a kalam. We're not talking about kalam. We're not talking about speech. We're talking about the understanding. At least we know what you're saying. It's not complete, but we understand. Even when we say bait, we know we're talking about a house. Nobody's confused. We know we're talking about a house. Now, you're not saying anything, but we know what house is. So th this is the definition of, uh, this is what he's talking about, three parts of speech. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. So this is the three parts of speech. Al-Aqsa Muhu Thalatha. So there are three parts. Ismun, Fa'ilun, Wa Harfun, Ja'a, Limanan. Okay, so if you have ism, we can loosely translate as a noun. Okay, but the reason, you know, in my other class, I just gave ism is noun, very easy, because that was, you know, your beginner class. But here, you have to kind of understand the little bit more uh, technical way what they mean by ism. Okay, so we can loosely define definitely as a noun and fail as a verb and harf as a particle. Particle. Okay, so here this is the mumte, not the uh, not the not the one by Muhammad Mahidin. So here, as you can see, uh, this is the this is the text. Hold on a second. This is the text that we read from the Ajurmiya, right? So it says, "Qal al Musannif." The author said, "Al Aqsa Mu Salatah." The whole thing that we read. Then, uh, I don't think if I uh, let let me just quickly go through what it says. A sharh. Right? The sharh is the explanation. Bayana is to clarify. Clarify. So to clarify. This is a verb. So it is in the past tense. Who Musannif? The Musannif clarified, Rahimullah, Anna al alfada alati tastakhdimuha al Arab fi kalamiha la la takhruju an wahidin min thalatha ashia. The, the author clarified that the alfad, this is the plural of love. Okay, the the words, the or the utterance that the Arabs usage, right? Remember the Arab usage, istakhdama. Inshallah, you know, the, I'm, I'm trying to give you not too many words in the beginning. In kalam, see, in their speech, la takhruju, it does not go outside. We, we had this word before, kharaja, yakhruju. Uh, sorry, kharaja, yakhruju. What is kharaja? To go out, which is the opposite of ja'a, right? Kharaja. So it does not go out of one from these three, thalatha ashya, three things. Now, this ashya word is uh, also interesting. So the words, the plural is shay'un. Shay'un. What is shay? I think we you guys should know this word. This is a very common word. What is shay? Thing. Very nice. Good. I'm happy you guys know this word. Because if everything is a brand new word, you know, you, you guys will get super uh, frustrated. But, you know, yeah, things, it's always hard in the beginning. It's always, you know, you ask anybody who knows me how much frustration I used to have. I used to sometimes to get so frustrated, like, teared up and everything you know because you feel like it i will you feel like at some point i thought you know this is me i'll never ever get this language it's just impossible only thing you have to do is stick around things this eyes it breaks off simple as that you know it's 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 just like that inshallah so uh shayun and ashia is the plural so that means he's saying that any speech any words any utterance that the arab does it does not go out of these three things or the three matters here you can also uh, translate as a matter and then he also of course mentioned the ism al fail and the harf the word aw aw means or so wa is and aw is or okay and why do we uh, you know uh, this is the word is aw with sukun we have a kasra because of alif lam uh, i think you guys know it inshallah we'll talk about those things later and uh, this is another word you might uh, see them a lot. Ta'arif. Ta'arif is definition. Ta'arif. Definition. Okay. Ta'arif is definition. So it's defining what? Al-ism. So it's defining the noun. 
So here I'm just going to use one definition because we don't have time to go through all of them so that you know you kind of understand how they're explaining things in actual text. It says huwa, huwa means the ism, kalima, you know kalima, huwa kalimatun dalla, dalla is to indicate, indicate. Now this is a verb, I think all of you, including my Modena Book 1 student, uh, you should know what's going on here. So what is this ta? Uh, this is a feminine. So yes, female ta, that's good. Like dhahaba, dhahabat. Don't worry, this thing will come, but you know, I'm just uh, mentioning here. It's because of the kalima. Anyway, so this word huwa, this ism is a word, kalima, indicates dalat ala, indicates on ma'anan, meaning fi nafsiha. See, fi nafsiha, by itself. Nafs is self. Nafs can be self and soul, obviously, we're not meaning soul here. So it has a meaning, it indicates a meaning. Dalat ala ma'anan. It indicates a meaning. Fi nafsiha, by itself. Walam. Lam, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, some of you know. Walam taqtarin. And it is not connected. Or it uh, is it, a past tense. It did not connect. Be zaman. Zaman is time. Okay, zaman is time. Or, uh, or tense. See, we can also use as a tense. See exactly what I said. So it's talking about a word that indicates a meaning by itself. So this is the number one thing. Word has to indicate by itself, which is opposed to what? Why we need this definition? Because this definition is important. This part is important because it is against the harf where it doesn't mean by itself. It cannot, it doesn't have any meaning by itself. So that's why this part is important. I told you when they define, they're very precise. They're very precise. So the word means by itself and it does not connect. It is not connected to any time. So, and then you can, inshallah, you can understand what would be the next one. And after, you know, knowing some of this thing, you can go and try to read and you will see a lot of these words will come. So here it gives you an example. Uh, okay. Misaluhu uh, is example. Zaid. Zaid is a name. Okay. Is a horse. Like Rasfur is a bird. Okay. Zahra is flower. Bait, bait is what? House. And Zaka, this is interesting. Zaka is, uh, is clever, like uh, a clever, cleverness, you know, something like that. So here in the details, see, we cannot even go a lot more details. Now you can see, you might be thinking, guys, you know, SubhanAllah, you're talking too much about one simple concept, but they go even a lot more details. And this is not the biggest explanation where he will talk about where he will be talking about, uh, I'm just trying to see if it, uh, this one he talks about, I'm pretty sure he does. Um, yes. It's a mahsus. See, he's talking about something that is apparent, meaning something that is, uh, what do you call, um, uh, tangible. Something that is tangible. So it could be something that is tangible. Bite is something Yes, uh, something you can feel, very nice. So something you can feel, you can sense, okay? His, his is the sense. So mahsus is something that's sensible. Oh, subhanAllah, it's <laughs> brother Karim, you know, you always uh, amaze me how how many uh, words, Arabic words are used in subhanAllah in, uh, in Urdu language. This is very useful, mashallah. So yes, it's the same word. Uh, so it's so something that you can sense, you can feel. So just like bite, it's something you can sense. Uh, zahara, you can sense. But zaka, zaka is a cleverness. Is there something you can sense? Sense? No. That's why it's saying غير mahsus, something that you cannot sense. Okay. It's called manawi. Like uh, manawi, it's like uh, what do you call this? What's the word in English? You understand when you compare with like, you know, something you can feel and something conceptual. Yeah, I think the conceptual would be yes, yes exactly abstract yes all of these things something that conceptually so see it go they go a lot in details about each of these topics okay so that uh, you know so this is interesting uh, so as i told you these books uh, these kind of books all of them will be like that guys all of them will be like that whether you study ajurumiya or you study any other grammar books classical or the more mostly classical books uh, the explanation they have to talk about these things 
Okay, so then it obviously it goes uh, into uh, into other parts. Uh, let me uh, let me actually look into the fail. So he starts talking about the fail here, and he gives the same meaning like everything. The word for the same thing. All this kalima but only thing is different. What it says? Look, it says walam. It did not connect with the tense. But here it's not using the word lam. It is connected with the time. Okay. So then it gives kama. Kama is to stand. Yakumu. So kama is he stood. Uh, guys, uh, learn this verb. Kama is he stood. Uh, yakumu is he is standing. The present tense. And kum stand. Which is the command verb. And I promised you that because uh, some of you are uh, not familiar with the verbs, I promised you that I'm gonna take a time, I'll take a pause from the book because book just simply assumes that you know the verb, simple as that. For, for like brother Karim and some of you who attended my other class, you guys might be comfortable with this, uh, this yakum and kum, but someone who just did Modina book one, they will understand this one, the past tense, because Modina book one definitely introduced something about the past tense but uh, you might have a problem. So don't worry too much about this thing. Right now, just learn as, as a vocabulary, okay? Kama is he stood, Yakumu is he standing, and Kum is stand. Inshallah, we will uh, go into them. But one thing that I want you guys to, uh, okay, so he's, he's good. He's, he is using another word for, uh, for the present tense. Both of them are fine. So, uh, let me just quickly uh, go through this part. So he mentioned there's three types of zaman. Okay, zaman you can you can spell both ways. You can say zaman or you can say uh, zaman. Uh, zaman. Both of them are fine. Okay, with the alif or with, without the alif, but it means time or the tense. Here, he is mentioning three of them. Here, so remember we talked about the madi. Uh, you guys have to know this, okay? Please, uh, please know these three terms. <clears throat> Madi is the past, and then he mentioned al hadir. Hadir and had, both of them are same, okay? Both of them are same. <clears throat> uh, both of them can be used for the present tense, okay? Hadir or hal. Yeah, you can use hadir. Both of them are fine. So the first one is uh, Madi. Then you have harder, and then we have mustaqbal, okay, the future. So these are the three times. Just like in English, only thing is that you might have to, you should know the Arabic term for these things. I, I don't think, you know, in the world there's any other tense other than these three. So, you know, this, the concept is not new. It's, we all understand this tense, but maybe the words might get to us, but, you know, inshallah, it's just another, another vocab. Now, guys, uh, now, now here, um, I'm going to show you something. The author in the original, Ajurumiya, he just mentioned this one, okay? And then when he starts talking about here, this is a completely uh, different topic. Okay, so uh, we're still in this line. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Because we have to, uh, I'm just thinking when to put this, the whole talk about the verbs. Uh, let's just uh, read through what the book is talking about the verbs. So remember when we said about Madi, Hader, or Hal, and Mustaqbal, we're talking about time. We're not talking about verbs. We're talking about time. Verbs are connected with the time, but you have to know these two difference. And the word is different, zaman and fail, right? Fail is the verb and zaman, you can think of tense. Okay, please make sure you understand these two concept. So one is the time or the tense, another one is verb. So there are three types of times or three tenses, past, present, and the future, madi, hadir, and mustaqbal. And now he's talking about three types of verbs that we have in Arabic language. 
See, uh, this is the, remember I told you all the nouns has a verb, is the verb of prism. What did I say about the prism? Hmm? What does prism mean? What does prism mean? Hmm? You forgot already. It is, uh, you guys were telling me, parts or types or kind, all of this, yes. Okay. So when you say something part and type and section, what are you doing? What are you doing? So if I say uh, this is one and then I give you this part, I give you this part, yes, dividing. So when, uh, yes, it will be classifying. Yeah, that's also fine. So, uh, so then when you use this word in a verb meaning, then we have to use like dividing or classifying. Here would be dividing would be much better uh, meaning. So fal fal uh, sorting is uh, sorting is different. Sorting has something to do with like you put things in arrange. Sorting has the muratab tartib like some kind of arranging. Okay, so sorting is a little bit different, but dividing you, we're just dividing it. Okay, so yan kasimu it would be mean dividing, or okay dividing, yeah, divide, diving, dividing. So the verb falfel fa is so. So the verb is divided, dividing, or divides. Remember uh, the present tense. You can read two ways. Present tense verb you can say with ing, or you can say as 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 a normal abstract way. For example, I can say I am walking, or I walk. Dividing or divide. So here the meaning would be the the fail is divides. Uh, divide the verb divides. Uh, divides subhanallah ila to thalathati aqsamin so see that word is coming now one word you just learned and see how many times this word by the way the prism you know inshallah you will be seeing this word way way too many of times in the arabic grammar so see you already saw this word like multiple times okay so it is divide the verb divides into three parts or the three types. However, uh, we here might be type or kind. You see, we have to translate this thing based on our context, whichever makes more sense. In Arabic language, you know, everybody understand. That when you say qism, it's understood. So now we're talking about, remember, now we're talking about types of verbs. We're not talking about time. We're talking about types of verb. So number one is maadi. So Maldin. So uh, this is a special type of word. Inshallah, we'll be talking a lot about this book, uh, Ismul Mankus. When we have, for example, when this word is, it's kind of a tricky word. When you put Alif Lam, it will be Al Maldi with the Ya. When you remove the Alif Lam, uh, we write it like this. It's a little bit tricky, but um, Inshallah, we'll be talking about this type of, uh, we'll be talking about this type of word. So Maldin. My, my, my machine is definitely acting up on me. Never mind. Uh, so the Madin, the past. So here it is saying that Wadala Hadathin. Hadath is something that happening, action, waqa that happened fi zamanil madi. See, now we're using the word madi not as the name of the tense. We're talking about the the name of the verb here, the Madi means the tense. And remember what I just said, when you don't have Alif Lam, and when you have Alif Lam, this year comes back. Just like Qadi, Al Qadi, Qadin. Okay, uh, these kind of words, uh, you will see them uh, often. So, the Madi is some kind of action, Hadas, Hadas is action, something that happens. Hadas is happening. This is also a good word, happening. It has a lot of lot of meaning, guys. This word has lots of tons of tons of meanings to the point I still get confused sometimes without knowing the meaning, meaning the context. Uh, how, you know, it has a lot of meanings. So a happening, uh, something that ha happens, what waqa is to, you know, this also means happening, something that happens in what? Fi zaman al madi in the past tense. So that's the main thing. Madi is something that happens in the past. For example, kataba, this word you have to know. Everybody should know kataba is like he wrote. Safara, anybody know what safara means? Hmm? 
he yes good he traveled so far he traveled and solla this one you guys should know huh what do you think solla means pray so it will be he prayed see all of them are in the past tense okay he wrote he traveled and he prayed so this is the mali clear here, you know, obviously we're going through just a simple shallow way, you know, just what the defining what's going on. Uh, guys, there's so many things to talk about Maldi, how do you conjugate so all of these things. I just have to find a way, the right time to go in details. So this is something that I have to maybe over the week, I'll figure out when to talk a lot more about the verbs. Then now the second type of the verb is al-mudare. Mudare. Okay, here we translate as a present tense only because why uh, we translate as a present tense from uh, because you know from when the verb types perspective. Mudare has a different meanings, but uh, but from the verb types we can, we translate al mudare as a present tense. Okay, you understand? And because um, mudare has a different meanings, uh, there's no point of giving that meaning. I have to. Uh, explain a bit more things. Yes, so something that is happening in the present times. Let's see what it says. In the present tense. That's the reason why the mudare it's a little bit difficult to explain from English language perspective. Okay, that's the, yes, I, I like that definition. What are you saying? The action is not complete. That's fine. And this is interesting uh, way of looking at it because the mudare, we'll define the word mudare why when we do Arab, but right now, just think about the word mudare. It talks about something, some uh, a verb that can be present in, that can indicate the present tense or the future tense. Okay, remember we're talking about types of verb. Not when right now we're not talking about different tense. Tense we have covered. We have three tense: the past, present, and the future. Madi, hader, or hal, and the mustaqbal. But now we are talking about what we're talking about: the types of verb in Arabic language, not in English, in Arabic language. So number one is madi, which is pretty much the same thing as. The English language which is the past tense. Then we have mudare. Now mudare is there saying that the verb, the action that talks about something that is in the present tense or in the future tense. Okay. Honestly speaking, even in English, anyway, uh, you know, when you look at the, uh, I think I mentioned some, I don't remember why. Even in English, the present tense verb, we use exactly the same verb to talk about the future. Right. Sleep is a is a present tense. Okay, he sleeps, but only thing we do what we use the word will, the helping verb, to make it into future. But the, look at the verb. Verb is the same. It looks exactly same, which which is different than the past tense, which is slept. So we can clearly see the past tense has a different shape, and the present tense and the future, the word is exactly the same. In Arabic language, we do exactly the same thing. Okay, we'll be using exactly same form of the verb without changing anything to talk about the uh, present and the future. Inshallah, we'll go in detail. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so don't think sometimes anything we hear in the Arabic, we feel like, oh, this is so complicated. But we forget that English language or even our other language, we have the similar uh, uh, weird things going on as well. Okay, so now, he gives you uh, this, uh, the present tense verbs. Kataba. Kataba is what? He wrote. So then he gives you the present tense. Yaktubu. He writes. Or we can say he is writing. He is writing. So how do we know which one? Uh, of course, guys, how do we know anything about language? Is by the context. So if we said Safara is he traveled 
what would be Yusafiru? He is traveling or he travels. Salla, here we said Salla means he prayed. Yusalli would be he is praying or he prays. Make sense? Now, now, now and this is the uh, second one. And the third type of verb we have is Al-Amr. Amr is the third types of verb. So see, in, in, in our English language, we have the past tense and the present tense and the future tense. That's how we categorize verb. In Arabic, we say past. We can, you know, Al-Mudare, we can consider as a present, you know, uh, just you understand what the present means here. And Al-Amr is, is a command. Command verb. Okay, so the al uh, so we have amr is a command verb. So what is command verb? Command verb is you know you're commanding something to do something. This concept is uh, it's in every language. In English we we use that all the time, you know. Uh, you know, write, go, leave, come. All of these things is, is how we say it. But as you can see in English, we use exactly the same uh, same verb form. If we want to say he's sleeping, we use the same verb, he sleeps, he is sleeping. If we want to say future, we use the same verb, he will sleep, he will be sleeping. If we want to order somebody, we use the same verb, sleep. You see, it's exactly the same verb. But the reason why Arabic language made it into different uh, category because in Arabic language, it's not the same case. The form, the shape, or the spelling of the command verb is different. Okay, so let's uh, look at the definition. So it says, "Huwa ma yadullu ala hadathin yutlibu or yutlabu," meaning what? A request uh, uh, is being requested. Requested husuluhu to obtain or to do that fi zaman il mustaqbal. So this is interesting thing, uh, uh, you know, about the command verb. Even in English, when you, uh, because the verb means what, guys? Verb means you need to have a tense. You need to have a time. So when you say command verb in English, you do, go, leave. If you say that those are a verb, you're saying command verb in English, I'm commanding you to do something. That means you better have a time to that action that you're, uh, you're requesting or you're talking about. So what do you think that action is? What do you think the time of that action is? If I say, right, yes, it's future. No, it's not now. It cannot be now. Uh, because when you say something, right, he's not writing right now. That means your anticipation that he will be writing. So the tense is future. It's very tricky to figure it out, but that's the case. Even in English, because when you say it's a command verb, you have to know the tense. When you say sleep, I'm sleeping, yes, fine you know your is a present tense he will be sleeping good it's in the future tense everybody understand but because we don't study grammar we don't think about this thing when we ask someone to sleep what is the tense now because verb we have to have a tense if you say present then the answer is wrong because if you ask somebody to sleep he is not sleeping now so how can it be a present tense so that means the idea is that the tense is the future that means he will be sleeping or i'm saying please sl sleep you know, so that means you're. I'm requesting something to happen in the future. So that's what uh, he is saying. Fi zamanil mustaqbal. In the future tense, in the future. So the tense of the command is the future. You're not doing it now. I'm asking you to do, and I'm anticipating. Uh, that's why it's requested. Your request to obtain or to happen. There's thing, things to happen in the future. Okay. So this is something uh, keep in mind. For example, same verbs using the same verb. Now he's saying uktub, right? So, you know, you're not writing. So I'm saying uktub, right? Safir, travel, and solli, pray. Okay, so these are all the same verb, but these are in the command. Like, you know, like pray, yeah, order, you know? Uh, that's, uh, that's what it is.
So here, look what he says about that. So everybody's clear about the verb. So he's obviously right now, we're just quickly simply defining what, what they are. We're not talking about this is another topic of the verb. This is not the topic of noun, none of these things. We're just talking about different types of parts of speech. Okay, we're just uh, going through a little bit information about them. And then the last one we, we have, al-harf, uh, which is, we talked about, we said that it's a particle. Look how he defined. He says, huwa kalimatun dalat ala ma'anan. Okay, looks like he's saying it It indicates a meaning, but look what it says, fi ghayriha. So that means it indicates a meaning other than it, in uh, using other than it. Okay, so meaning that you need other word to understand its meaning okay it's just a different way of saying that it doesn't uh, give meaning by itself okay so you see uh, different people are writing different way but the concept is same the half it doesn't give you meaning by itself you need something else and what are the something else can you add two half to make another meaning no you know you can you can add two halves but it's not going to give you meaning yet and uh, two two bad things doesn't make it into good things right uh, so you need a uh, you need a uh, noun or the verb, okay? And then he gave you a few example of the harf. Uh, don't know if lam lam will come. It's like something I did not. Uh, uh, fee we know fee is in and hal hal is a question, like yes no question. So these are the tools. You can think about tools. Some of the tools that we use in our language. Okay, then of course he goes in details how, how how these words are not giving you meaning and we need something else to understand. Uh, for example, lam. We don't know what lam means. Honestly, we don't know what lam means. But we, when we use a verb, then, okay, now we understand what lam means. Okay, we talked about this thing. We don't have to dwell too much on these ideas. So guys, is it clear? Uh, what I'm saying is that it looks like every day we're just tackling one line. Uh, Probably it's not going to be the case all the time. Uh, so don't worry. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the case all the time. Sometimes we'll be running a bit fast. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it will be uh, just like that. Uh, but what uh, I'll just explain to you something about how the uh, how uh, next uh, 10 minutes, whatever we have, I'll just explain how these grammar books are organized so that you know what's coming. This, and you'll find them like way, way different than what uh, they're teaching you in the Medina book or any other Arabic books that is written for the non-Arabs. Okay, so the grammar books, they always start with what I said, uh, the speech and the word. Okay, some people start with the word first, kalima, some people start with the kalam first. For example, Qatar Nada, it started with the kalima first, the word. Then it started talking about the kalam. Okay, there, I have a question. Is it safe to say that uh, any word that does not fall within the isim or fil? Yes, it is it, it, not only safe, it's a good question. A lot of book will define, that would be the definition of harf. But honestly, this is not uh, uh, this is not a super interesting definition, but this is uh, one of the definition I've seen in many, many books. Usually I find it in, um, I don't know if I found it in a classical book, but that's one of the definition. Meaning if you have a word, that is not that you cannot put in into isim or fail, then you have no other choice but the container, which is the half. So that's why I was going uh, through, you're asking about what are the adverbs like daily and weekly. Remember, I just I just went, uh, we just talked about the daily. So you think about this one. Let's, let's uh, it's a good question. Let's go through this one again, weekly. So uh, what do you think about this word? By looking at the word week, you think it has a time. But do you think it has a time? When I say weekly, remember when we said time, we were talking about tense. Do you think it has a tense? No, it doesn't have a tense because we don't know it happened in the past, present or the future. It's just talking about, a, it's an adverb, right? You need a verb to define what you're doing weekly or something. So because I explained to you the daily, I can use this word in the past, I can say, I was running weekly, you know, or I'm running weekly, or I'll be running weekly. So this is an adverb. And now from our definition, we know that this is a word that can stand by itself. Weekly, we understand what weekly is. It's just a, you know, it's, it's a habit, some kind of uh, talking about, talking about uh, you know, habitual thing. So now, where does it go? Isim says, word that stands by itself, it's not connected to time, 
and the fail says what stands by itself it is connected with the time and the half says what doesn't stand by itself so it's we have no other choice but to put in ising that's why that's why it's very difficult uh, to just use the word noun uh, yeah so i like the way you said the noun we are using noun as an umbrella to include everything else yes as long as this concept in your mind that we are using noun as a broader sense so that we can you know at least use an english word instead of saying ism then that's fine other than that you know these are not some uh, you know magic this you know by the way just quick a uh, note this division you know you think uh you think the arabs who in the beginning who started like before the islam or everything you think they figured this thing out no this this was their natural way of speaking and writing everything the later generations they look through every single word every single word that exist except for you know inshallah i'll talk about when i talk about a very interesting type of word everybody saw that all these words in arabic language you can divide them into this category from the linguistic uh, from the grammatical perspective okay so that's how uh, they define them and these are very good definition honestly our life makes so much easier when even if it's adverb even if it's adjective even if it's pronoun it doesn't matter when we categorize and say it's ism that you know so much we can just generalize a lot of things instead of saying same thing for adverb same thing for because you know they share a lot of things in terms of grammar they share a lot of things in terms of grammar so that's why this is very good uh, categorization uh, do i have another so kind of like preposition in this which one uh, let me see what you guys are writing yes uh yes yes so so yeah the, the idea of the daily weekly thesis yeah, is an adverb right uh, so we're just thinking about uh, we we have no option just think about this thing we have beautiful we know this is an this is not a noun we know that this is an adjective but in arabic we have no options we have these three names three parts ism fail and harf what are my choices it's never going to be fail so you leave that part alone and it's not a half because you know you understand this is a word it can stand you know it's a complete word by itself so what are, what is your option your option is ism so right now feel that i'm being forced to put it in ism i'm fine with that right but when we study uh, the arab and you'll see why is it important because you'll see the beautiful the grammar aspect is the same thing as muhammad which is a name so you will see the adjective adverb they all have the same same element same things uh, uh, in terms of the grammar issue especially the era of the ending you know so that's when you will be appreciating uh, this concept right now you know if you feel that i'm being forced to put i want to say beautiful is a noun you know noun is because you are defining noun uh, in english right so that's fine makes sense guys you know you will see this concept will come and now you can see how much talk we can say about these things and verses when we're doing the same concept in the quranic arabic class we just mention them and then we moved moved on but here we have to talk a lot more about this concept and the trust me the book went even way way much more they keep on talking 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 because a lot of this concept we have to get cleared up from the beginning and because later on we'll just going to be using them as a term ism fail boom you have to understand everything else jade so uh, one thing that i wanted to uh, wrap up with uh, the concept how how the book will be um, uh, organized and this is the case for everything uh, as far as i know the most of the arabic grammar book so they in the beginning they talk about the noun uh, sorry they talk about the kalima or kalam uh, the the word and the speech then uh, which is not the case with any book like you open binary they, they don't talk about it they just go right to the text right you open mudina book they don't do that they any book the kitab al asasi none of them because for non arabs that's not the case by the way uh, there's another reason because those are not you know uh, those are not grammar book per se those are like you know language uh, textbook so after uh, talking about kalam and kalima they will talk about this concept of how we understand now that you said that every word can be in these three types how do we recognize a word which one it belongs to so is there a way we can find out whether the word where the word goes like whether it's a noun ism fail or harf 
And then they're going to have a very interesting discussion about these things. How do we recognize? What are the signs of the nouns? What are the signs of the field? What are the signs of the heart? How do we, you know, we look at the word, how do we understand? Because all the rules that goes about the fail, it goes for the word fail. So you have to know which one is the fail. If you don't know the fail, and then how do you apply the rules, right? So that's what will be our next discussion. And you will see, inshallah, uh, uh, this, this will be very interesting and uh, maybe a little bit a long uh, discussion. It comes up to here, here. And of course, then after that, we have the biggest, biggest topic of the whole Arabic language is the Bab Al-Arab. Okay, inshallah, you know, that that is going to be like months, months and months. It's very interesting and most important things. Inshallah, we'll have uh, tons of fun with those. But I'm just telling you this concept of, uh, 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 you know, how do we identify? Okay, so I think uh, I'll stop here, but I want to say some more words of encouragement. Guys, things in the beginning is always hard. Okay, right now, if you get one thing at a time, I want you to get comfortable. The, this is a grammar course. Obviously, it's a grammar course. So I'm focusing on grammar. If you understand the grammar, I'll be teaching grammar in English and also giving you the Arabic terms. So that's my focus. But at the same time, I will push you to learn some of the words, okay? If you look at this here and you see like, I don't know any single word. So don't think frustrated from that perspective. That's not, you know, you know, I know you guys are not on that stage. So that's not the issue that I have. I have the issue is that once in a while, some of the words, for example, listen, you saw that how many times we already saw this word already. See, every time you push this word aside, you don't want to memorize it. Please and aqsam. Uh, aqsam. you know you are you know you're not you're just you, you understand so some of the words you i would rather want you to memorize so you know it your life will be easier you're learning something so inshallah you know keep that in mind some of the words especially if I, i'm writing the words meaning in english <clears throat> uh, i would really want you to try to memorize those words okay